Before I begin this video, I should say that the original version of this video was on the Patterson Gimlin film. However, because it contained copyrighted content, I was forced to take it down. After over a year, I've decided to re-upload a new version that focuses on debunking Bigfoot in general instead of just the Patterson Gimlin film. It's time to revisit the Cryptozoology debunked series and talk about whether or not Bigfoot exists. In a similar way as to how I dealt with my video on flying humanoids, I'm going to take a look at the biology and evolution of Bigfoot, and just so we can condense this answer into one video, I'll be focusing on the North American Bigfoot, sometimes called the Sasquatch. Generally, Bigfoot is considered to be 2-3 to three meters tall and a large bipedal primate covered in shaggy hair. A lot of this doesn't make sense from a biological stance. Few animals in North American forests get this big, and there are no large apes native to the Americas in general. It's very possible that almost all Bigfoot sightings are one of two things, hoaxes or misidentification. There are numerous examples of Bigfoot hoaxes, such as the Minnesota Iceman, the Bigfoot in a Freezer, and Hank, all of which were done using costumes and dead animal bodies. You can Google these if you like. The most controversial example would be the Patterson-Gimlin film, which my previous video focused on. While the footage is genuine, there are holes in the stories of Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin who took the video, such as when they got the film developed, as well as evidence that they hired a neighbor, Bob Hieronymus, to dress up as Bigfoot. Most times, however, it will be misidentification. People will see animals or objects that they misidentify as Bigfoot. In 2009, the University of Illinois published a study in which they used databases of ecological niche models, or ENMs, to compare Bigfoot to other animals. Based on the data we have from Bigfoot sightings, the study concluded that Bigfoot's ENM matches that of the black bear, and thus the study concluded that many sightings of Bigfoot are most likely misidentifications of black bears. This makes sense. Black bears are large, especially in person, and are capable of standing upright, are omnivorous, and can show behavior very similar to apes. If there's one species behind Bigfoot, it's the black bear. But Bigfoot enthusiasts have another answer. Bigfoot is either living examples of or the descendants of an extinct giant ape known as Gigantopithecus. Now, if you don't know what Gigantopithecus is, Gigantopithecus is an extinct species of a giant ape that once lived in the forest of Southeast Asia. Based on fossil evidence, it's been called the largest ape that ever lived, standing about 3 meters tall, I'll get to this number in a minute, and weighing 540 kilograms. It sounds a lot like Bigfoot, but there are several flaws with this explanation. Firstly, Gigantopithecus went extinct around 900,000 years ago, before the first humans even existed. Secondly, the ape isn't found in North America. It was confined to the tropics of Asia. As I stated before, there are no apes native to North America, only a few monkeys. Thirdly, we only have a few teeth and mandibles from the fossil record, and even though this isn't abnormal, it still means we don't know exactly how big the animal was. And the number I said before, 3 meters, is only an estimate based on teeth and other hominins. So until someone comes out with evidence proving that Gigantopithecus lived past the Ice Age and found its way to North America, this isn't a good argument either. All apes except humans are confined to Asia or Africa, specifically the tropics. Bigfoot simply doesn't fit on the evolutionary tree of primates. Which of the modern apes is it closest to? Chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutans, us, gibbons? Where is the room for a primate in North America? Now if you've been paying attention, you may have noticed a flaw in my argument. How did monkeys get to North America then, and why couldn't other apes besides humans get here as well? To answer the second part of the question first, humans crossed the Bering Land Bridge to get to North America. Other apes could not survive the harsh northern climates, especially not Gigantopithecus, which is closest to modern orangutans. As for monkeys, the first monkeys in North America are believed to have come around 21 million years ago, beginning in Panama. These monkeys are believed to have crossed from South America after a land bridge formed between the continents around 5 million years ago. It's believed that these monkeys came from Africa by floating on rafts, similar to how we believe lemurs reached Madagascar, and there's no evidence that larger apes like Bigfoot are capable of this. So those main points basically sum up my thoughts on Bigfoot's existence, although there's one more thing I must add. In 2014, the Royal Society of Biology published a study analyzing 30 known hair samples attributed to Bigfoot-like primates. Now if you want to check out the source, as always, I have a link to the study in the description, but because we're focusing on the North American Bigfoot, I'll tell you what the study reported. Of the 18 samples from the US which were analyzed, 
five were bears, four were some type of canine, possibly a wolf, three were cows, and one horse, human, raccoon, sheep, porcupine, and deer each. Not exactly very convincing results. The other samples basically yield the same animals with the exception of a fascinating deer-like animal called the Saro from Nepal and a taper from Malaysia. So basically, none of these results yield anything mysterious. Well, actually that's not true. Two of the samples yielded polar bears, but they were from Bhutan and India, places you don't exactly associate with polar bears. Polar bears are believed to have gone extinct in these regions. If these were from genuine polar bears living in those regions, this means there is still a mystery to be solved. So while Bigfoot may not exist, there are still numerous other mysteries for us to solve in the world of science. Thanks for watching. Once again, sorry for taking so long to redo the fifth installment of our Cryptozoology Debunked series, but now that it's up, be sure to check out the other videos in the series in which I talk about other cryptids such as Champ, the Devil Bird, and the Jersey Devil. Be sure to look in the description for the playlist link or click on the annotation on your screen.